back in the 1960s, there was an excavation going on on the Masada, just outside of Jerusalem, where they uncovered a clay pot with date pits. Sometime later, someone decided to see if these 2,000-year-old date pits would sprout. After carefully preparing the soil and temperature, one of the seeds sprouted. Today, this date palm is now over 10 feet tall. Want to know how to grow spiritually closer to the Creator? This week, international speaker Doug Batcher talks about that very topic. My message today is going to be the second part in a series we began last week. In talking about Christian growth, I want to make it clear that knowledge is not growth. Knowledge is important. But gaining more knowledge, going to more seminars, reading more books, understanding more principles does not constitute Christian growth. Uh, you can have all of that and not be growing spiritually. Real Christian growth is growing to be more Christ-like and having the fruits of the Spirit in your life. And we'll be talking about that. Now I've got a little assignment for the kids. If I've got a challenge, I'm curious how many times during this sermon I'm going to say the word grow or growth. You might jot that down and let me know afterward because uh, I think it's going to come up more than once. We talked last week about there are seven ways a baby grows. We're very thankful that we have babies in our church. That's a sign of new life and growth. And if a baby, and babies don't worry about growing, do they? If they do, they've never told us. But uh, babies grow by simply taking within. Growth happens because of something going on on the inside. They take within them the food, the air, they exercise, they have family, they get regular cleaning, there's rest and there's love. And uh, we've talked about some of these things and we're going to pick up where we left off. I'd like to begin by just uh, sharing a little amazing fact. Uh, you know we like amazing facts here. Uh, the um, bristlecone pine that you find in the White Mountains of California is the longest living tree in the world. And dendrochronologists have done a couple of core samples and they found one that they believe was over 5,000 years old. Now they can't always tell exactly because the lines in the tree might sometimes be caused by uh, some several changes in one season, but generally they represent a year. And they have some of these trees they think that date back about 5,000 years. The interesting thing is, as old as these trees are, they don't get very tall. They grow very slowly. A 20-year-old ponderosa pine is taller than a 2,000-year-old uh, bristlecone pine. Now, how are you growing as a Christian? Are you a ponderosa or a bristlecone? <laughs> the Lord wants us to grow and He wants us to bear fruit. And the uh, Bible tells us in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. I want to make it clear, you can be a Christian in one day. You can be a Christian in 10 minutes. You can be justified very quickly by accepting Jesus and understanding that commitment. But growth is something that is going to take time. It's something that happens in a process the Lord has naturally built into our lives. We call it the process of sanctification. But uh, some people accept Christ and then they don't do the growing part. A.W. Tozer said, some people find themselves in religious ruts. They find they're getting older but they're not getting holier. Time is their enemy, not their friend. And so just because you've been a Christian a long time does not mean you're growing in Christ. So it's cr so crucial that we grow in sanctification. Let me quickly review the first three keys that we talked about that are important for a baby to grow. First of all, we grow by eating good food. What is the food? It's the Word of God. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word. Do you feast on the Word? Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. Do you on a regular basis read His Word? 
2 Peter 2.2, 2, I'm sorry, 1 Peter 2.2, 2, says, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. That can't be misunderstood. If you want to grow, you need to be feeding on the word of God. Not only is it called milk, the word of God is called meat, it's called honey. The law of the Lord is like the honey in the honeycomb. So are you reading the Bible? Do you have regular devotions? Another way a baby grows is by breathing. What does the breathing represent? It's prayer. Prayer is the breath of the soul. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Pray without ceasing. You have been breathing without ceasing. Not, you haven't ceased for very long. Ask me how I know that. Because you wouldn't be alive. Your whole life you've been breathing. And in order for a baby to grow they need to breathe. I was surprised when I, I was reading in the spirit of prophecy that there's a right way to breathe and a wrong way to breathe. Did you know that? Some people breathing is shallow. I thought that, you know you just breathe. If you're alive you must be breathing. But there's a wrong way you can breathe. People ought to breathe deeply and you ought to breathe good air. Amen? Pray without ceasing. Walk with God. Three, we grow by exercise. A baby if they just handcuffed in a crib they're not going to grow they wiggle and they scoot and they move and we're so excited when they finally roll over and they get into the combat crawl and start doing that lunge forward finally they get up on all four and we're just praising them we're so excited and when they can take a few steps on two feet through all that exercise and activity it helps them grow and part of the wiggling and the squirming is part of the growing process um, don't be afraid if sometimes the growing is slow, but be afraid of standing still. Have you ever seen kids? It's like they don't grow. I know Daniel. Uh, he was so short until he, you know, got to be like 13, and then he just shot up, and now he's about six feet. And so sometimes it, the growth happens in spurts. Have you seen that? I was looking at a picture yesterday. You know, Donald Trump and Melania have their son together. I can't remember his name. Baron. Baron. I, Baron, yeah. And I, they just showed a picture of him getting out of the helicopter with his father. He's taller than Donald Trump now. <laughs> he is just a beanpole. He is. He's he got a tall mother. And, but it just, it, it's like he grew two feet in a year. <laughs> and you know something else about growing? You ever have growing pains? I remember one of our kids just aching <laughs> and knees were hurting and my grandmother told me an old wives tale that if you tie a sock around the ankle it helps. And it seemed to work. I don't know if it was the placebo effect but we did it anyway. But uh, you're growing pains. But to grow you need to exercise. Now we're taking up where we left off last week and I've just got uh, four more here. In order to grow we need to be connected with a family. God designed that babies are not born out in the woods like mushrooms. They are born into families where they have a mother and a father and they get the nurture and we need the social relationship. Acts chapter 2, 42, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, breaking bread and in prayers. They were together in fellowship. If you want to grow you cannot be a maverick Christian just out there on your own. Now there's some people because of the geography and the culture they're in, the Christianity is not allowed and God will sustain them but it is so much better when you can fellowship with other believers. It helps you prevent becoming eccentric. Uh, take it from someone who lived in a cave. They used to have these um, aesthetics and they thought in order to be holy you must be isolated from all people. And like Simon Stylite, he, he lived up on a pillar by himself because he was trying to stay away from the people so he wouldn't be contaminated or something or be holier, could think more about God without distractions. There are days that sounds appealing, doesn't it? I'd like to, like David said, if I could just make wings like a bird and fly away, be by myself and I could be close to God and none of the temptations, not none, but none of the typical temptations that come from being in the world. But Jesus didn't call us to be isolated. He says He wants us to be together. Hebrews 10 verse 24, And let us consider one another, notice that phrase, in order to stir up love and good works. How do we do that? By being together. 
not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. It was a problem even back in Paul's day where people were neglecting to assemble together. And what's the most important time in the week to assemble together? Sabbath day. It's okay to get together in small groups. We should be doing it through the week. But the Sabbath is called a holy convocation. That word there, Leviticus 23, means a convening, an assembly, a coming together. And, you know, it happens slowly. People, there, they miss one week and say, oh, I was really tired, so I slept this one in. You know, God knows I needed rest. And then you find out they make it two or three weeks, and then they miss two weeks. And then they make it for two weeks, and they miss three weeks. It doesn't happen quickly. But they start missing, and then, you know, then you're really at risk. If we don't have that time together, uh, I think over 140 times in the Bible, New and Old Testament, you will find the phrase, one another. I did just a clinical computer search on it, and it was about 146 times. One another, one another, one another. In the New Testament, it says, love one another, serve one another, comfort one another. It's really hard for you to be doing all that by yourself. Isn't that right? So we need to be spending time together. You know why? Uh, to grow and also for your own safety. You know, when the devil gets the, um, the sheep like a wolf is when they're on the fringes of the flock and he can pick them off. There was a curse pronounced by Moses on Amalek. You know why? Because Amalek, when the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea and they came out and they were young and they were old and they were weak and they were strong and the Amalekites attacked. Let me read it to you. Deuteronomy 25, 18. Amalek attacked your, attacked your rear ranks, all the stragglers at your rear, the weak ones on the fringes. If you want to be safe, you want to be off there in the middle. This week we have a special gift to share with you. It will help you better understand important biblical topics that will enhance your life and inspire you to further study the Bible. Because we believe you will find this a blessing, we will mail you this gift free of charge. Give us a call to place your order today. Simply call, write, or email and ask for the free offer number displayed on your screen. Our toll-free number is 1-877-721-3800. Or write to us at Amazing Facts Ministries, Post Office Box 449, Creston, B.C., V0B1G0. Our email address is contact at AmazingFactsMinistries.com. Fish, why do they swim in a school? Because they're weak by themselves. But when they're in a school, they can dazzle and daze their predator enemies and they don't know which one to focus on. And if I was a fish, if I was a sardine, have you ever thought about this? <clears throat> if I was a sardine, I'd be looking for the middle of the school, wouldn't you? And if you want to be safe from the devil, get in the middle of the church. Get involved. Get right out in the middle of it. Get elbow deep in the dishes or whatever you got to do potluck, but get in the middle and uh, we need one another. If you want to grow as a baby, stay in a family. Key number five, rest. Now some people think, how do you grow by resting? That's a fact. You need rest to grow. Dr. Cara Natterson, pediatrician, graduate of John Hopkins and Harvard, said for children, sleep is critical as an ingredient to good growth. A lot of the growing, your body is not stagnant when you're sleeping. It's actually very active. A lot of processes going on. There's repairing that's going on. There's cell multiplication that's going on. You're growing. And they've actually shown that growth can be stunted by a lack of rest. Healing can be hampered by a lack of rest. So to grow, we need rest. Psalm 37, 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Every Sabbath day, I hope we do some growing spiritually and I hope we do some resting and I hope we're growing while we're resting. It's not just talking about sleep. Jesus wants us to rest in faith. Matthew 6, 27. Which of you by worrying can add a cubit to his stature? Can you worry yourself taller? 
So one of the things to do to grow as a Christian is trust the Lord, that you will grow. You know, you get what you believe. The Bible says, be it unto you according to your faith. So after I did the first message on growth, some of you probably came away feeling guilty because you haven't grown more. Trust that if you do the things that you're saying, you're going to grow. Babies don't worry about growing. But they do receive the things that we're talking about. You need to breathe. You ever see a baby, sweet baby, in its parents' arms? They got complete trust. I noticed little Micah, when he went from dad's arms to my arms, he lost faith. <laughs> he started going, who's this? <laughs> so if you're in your father's arms, you need to rest. Have faith. Mark 11, verse 22, Jesus answered and said, have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask for when you pray, believe that you receive them. Trust God, rest in his promises. And he said, you will have them. If you're worried about not growing, ask God to move that mountain and help you start growing and believe that he will. Faith will lead to answered prayer, and answered prayer will lead to greater faith. That's the way it works. If your faith is small, you say, oh, Lord, I've just got a little faith. There was a man that came to Jesus one day and said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And Jesus could answer that prayer. He healed his son. Key number six. I came out with seven keys here to uh, growing as a Christian is you need regular cleansing. A baby, as cute as they are, do need an occasional cleansing. Hey Amen? They don't worry about it. They trust that their parents are going to help them with that. Sometimes they worry if it doesn't happen quick enough and you'll hear about it. <laughs> Some don't care so much. <laughs> First John 1 John 1.8 If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we've not sinned, we make Him a liar and His word is not in us. So as soon as we recognize that we've fallen, confess it quickly. Someone said you keep short accounts with the Lord. Don't let your guilt and shame pile up. As soon as you recognize that you've slipped or fallen, bring it to the Lord. Ask Him to heal, to forgive, to cleanse, and His promises He will. Amen? Amen. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another. You know, this is again part of that church family is that uh, there's, there's strength in intercession with each other for that cleansing. And then point number seven is you grow in love. You know, children actually grow better in a loving environment. And we grow in the love of God. Practicing, exercising love makes you grow to be more like Christ. Now, how many of you want more love? Do you develop more love by living on an island by yourself? No. Uh, love must be uh, shared to be experienced. That's one reason that in order for God to have been eternal God, God needed to be the three persons. Because how can God be love and have no one to love? But if God is the only one that is eternal, in order for Him to be eternal God, there must be more than one person or you can't express your love. Did you get that? That makes sense? But the Father, Son, and Spirit are eternal. In order for us to love, it must be expressed. If you say, Lord, give me more love, well, let me say it differently so you know where I'm going. If you say, Lord, give me more patience, what will the Lord give you? Delay. Because it is through delay, you don't develop patience by getting everything right on time. Isn't that right? So if you say, give me love, God is going to put you in touch with some people that will grow your love muscles. <laughs> and yes, your love can grow. And you might wonder, why am I going through these trials? God says, I'm growing your love. And God will give us opportunity to practice our love for each other. In the last days, one of the problems is that people's love is not growing. Notice Matthew 24, 12. Because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow the wrong way. It grows cold. So love can grow, 
It can grow warm and it can grow cold. 2 Thessalonians 1.3 We are bound to thank God always for you brethren as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you abounds towards each other. There's a beautiful example. And I can repeat again Ephesians 4.15 But speaking the truth in love that we may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, 1 Corinthians 13. But when I became a man, now how did you go from child to man? You grew. And you grow in your love. And he says, now abides faith, hope, love, these three. But what's the greatest? The greatest of these is love. God is love. And the most beautiful thing of Christ we can imitate is his love. So in conclusion, I want to ask, how do you know if you're growing? I mean, does God give us a Bible metric? He says examine yourselves if you're in the faith. Well, do you know by the fruits? Jesus said you'll know them by their fruits. And you'll have the fruits of the Spirit. Here's a, I've got seven questions you can ask. For one thing, Jesus came to save you from your sin. Does sin in your life have dominion over you? Are you addicted to anything other than Jesus? Uh, you can't be a healthy Christian, plain and simple. I don't mean the occasional moral failure. The Bible says, for there is none that does not sin. What we're talking about is where Paul says, sin shall not have dominion over you. Hebrews 12.1, therefore since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin that so easily ensnares us. How do we do this? We run the race by fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Pray that God will give you victory. Second point, have you forgiven others? Are you growing? Have you forgiven others that hurt you? Are you easily offended? Do you nurse a grudge? Do you stay bitter? Do you think about vengeance? You're growing as a Christian when you can quickly slough off offenses. Ephesians 4.32 Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. How does He want us to forgive? As Jesus forgave us. Growth means we're growing to be like Christ. Point three, are you sharing your faith? Part of growth means to share it. Jesus said, if anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him. But if you confess me, I will confess you. And so don't be afraid to confess to others, to testify that you're a Christian. If you want more information, Great place to stick in a commercial. Amazing Facts has a lot of stuff you can use to share your faith. Everybody can do something. Amen? That's a sign of growth. Are you bearing the fruits of the Spirit? Are you new creatures? Galatians 5, has some of the best definition. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Do you have these in your life? Long-suffering, that's patience. Kindness, are you kind? Goodness faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Peter puts it this way. 2 Peter 1 verse 5 But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Notice there's an addition happening here. To virtue knowledge. To knowledge self-control. This is a progression as you get the knowledge and then you gain self-control. To self-control perseverance to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and they abound, you will be neither barren or unfruitful. You want to be fruitful? Then ask by God's grace and through His Spirit to add the Christian virtues that you can imitate Jesus. Test number five, do you have regular time with God in prayer and the study of His Word? Um, Good time with God is not found, it's made. You got to choose to make it. You're not just, if you're waiting for it to happen on its own, it doesn't work that way. Set aside time with God. 1 Timothy 4.13, Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. 1 Thessalonians, as I read before, pray without ceasing. Daniel 
three times a day as his custom was, he knelt and he prayed and he studied God's word. Six, are you generous towards God and man? This is a test. You can sometimes tell if a person is growing by their, their faith and their generosity. Proverbs 3 verse 9, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruit of all of your increase. Were you faithful in tithes and offerings? Do you care about others in need? Proverbs 28, 27, he who gives to the poor will not lack, but he who hides his eyes will have many uh, curses. So we want to be growing in our generosity and trusting God. Are we cheerful givers? Number seven, are you experiencing spiritual growth? Looking back over the past, can you identify progress? Do you see where you are tested and by God's grace you were winning. Now you're, you know, sometimes in Christian life you almost feel like you take two steps forward and then you, you take a step back. But then you take two steps forward and you see you're making progress. And so do you see that you're growing? Things that, where you used to fall or you're easily perturbed, are you becoming more patient? Are you becoming more loving? Are you becoming more kind, more generous? You know, don't get too discouraged if you fall. Uh, it's not one thing. There's a great quote in the book Steps to Christ, page 57. The character is not revealed by the occasional good deed or occasional misdeed, but by the tendency of the habitual words and actions. What is your character? It's defined by what your habitual actions are. Here at Amazing Facts Ministries, we are dedicated to sharing God's Word all across Canada. We would like to extend to you the opportunity of joining us in this important work through your financial contributions. You will receive a tax-deductible receipt for your donations. It is the support of our viewers which helps make this broadcast possible. Donations can be sent to Amazing Facts Ministries. We thank you for your kindness. Join us each week as we share the Word of God that will change your life. We welcome you to check out our website, AmazingFactsMinistries.com, where you can sign up for free online Bible studies, check out our resource catalog, and watch our weekly video broadcasts. If you have a specific prayer request or a question on a topic from the Bible, send us an email we will add you to our prayer list and help answer your questions. We hope that you've enjoyed our weekly Amazing Facts Ministries program. This week we have a special gift to share with you. It will help you better understand important biblical topics that will enhance your life and inspire you to further study the Bible. Because we believe you will find this a blessing, we will mail you this gift free of charge. Give us a call to place your order today and ask for the free offer number displayed on your screen. 